Light enters a solid tube made of plastic having index refraction of 1.6. Light travels parallel to the upper part of the tube. You want to cut face AB, AB, so that it will reflect back into the tube after it first strikes that face. What is the largest theta that we can be if the tube is in air? Okay, so this is going to be Snell's Law. I'm going to write up Snell's Law real quick. N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. And drawing this up on the picture here, we're going to draw a normal to the surface. This is going to be theta 1. This is going to be a normal to surface here. And this right here is going to be theta 2. This is going to have an index refraction of 1. This is going to have an index refraction of 1.6. All right. And then we know it's 1 because it's air. And air is assumed to have an index refraction of 1. It's actually a little bit higher, but it's close. So then what it's asking for is theta. But the angle that we use for Snell's law is the angle that's respect to the normal. So theta 1. But there's... Um, 90 equals theta 1 plus theta because you can see this is a right angle and so we could say that theta equals uh, 90 minus theta 1 so we're going to solve for theta 1 once we get theta 1 we can get theta so looking at this we're going to say that um, solving this for theta 1 theta 1 equals n2 sine of theta 2 over n one, so this is material one, this will be N1, this will be N2, and then we're gonna do arc sine, inverse sine. This gives us um, arc sine. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention, this says um, that the light will reflect back into the tube. This is referring to complete internal reflection, where usually light, some will reflect and some will refract. And at a certain point, as in this case, as this light, um, as this angle gets, basically, so light, if, if light is shown this direction, it's going to go straight through. But it's going to keep bending more and more the closer you get to an angle. Eventually, the furthest that this light can bend is going to be 90 degrees. And so when they're talking about this complete internal reflection, what they're saying is that theta 2, this angle on the outside here, is as big as it can possibly be. The biggest it can possibly be is 90 degrees. And so for then, all the light is going to be reflected into the... Um, reflected and none of it's going to escape. This is a phenomenon that when you look at the math, it just kind of comes comes out of the math. It's only going to happen when you have light travel from a slow to fast. If you go from a fast to a slow, not possible. It has to do with the idea that the light is going to re refract more towards the surface. It's going to move as it passes through the interface, it's going to move more towards the face. So th that basically gives us the information that theta 2, in this case, 90 degrees. So we have arc sine of N2, which we know is 1, sine of 90 degrees, which we also know is 1, all over N1, which is 1.6. This gives us a value of on second arc sine of 1, over 1.6 that gives us 38.7 38.7 degrees but we're not concerned with theta 1 we're concerned with theta which is 90 minus theta 1 and that's just because the angle they are referring to is respect to the surface but we use that we find the angle with respect to the normal because that's how Snell's law works so we do 90 minus second answer, and we get 51.3. There we go. 
degrees. So that's going to be the maximum theta. Then for the second part, they ask us, all right, how would this change if n2 now equals 1.33? Because they're like, all right, if the tube is immersed in water, refractive index 1.3, ooh, they add an extra three. What is the largest that theta can now be? Now, the idea here is before, we went from 1.6 to 1, which means they had a big bend in the refraction of the light. If we're going from 1.6 to 1.33, there's going to be less bending, and so the angle is going to change. Um, but it's still going from a slower, because higher index of refraction means slower speed of effective speed of light in the medium. And we're still going from slower to faster, so we can still have complete internal reflection. But it's going faster to slower, not applicable. So anyway, long story short, we're going to go to, I'm going to start with this, move this over here. Theta 1, this is going to be part B. Theta 1 now equals arc sine, just as before, of theta 2, 1.33, 3 times sine, we're still having complete internal reflection, so we're still doing 90 degrees, all over 1.6. So this goes to 1, and we now ha are going to do the arc sine, the inverse sine of, second inverse sine of 1.333 divided by 1.6, close parentheses, and that gives us 56.4, 56.4 degrees, therefore theta, equals 90 minus 56.4, which is 90 minus second answer, and that gives us 33.6, 33.6 degrees. 33.6 degrees. So the largest angle we can use with air, for theta, in this case to be 51.3, largest angle for Submerged in water would be 33.6. And this gets, this gets back to the idea of complete internal refraction, reflection, where complete internal reflex, reflection implies that theta 2, the exiting theta, is 90 degrees. All right, hope that helped with that problem. Let's go to the part two. The critical angle for the in total internal reflection at a liquid air interface is 40.5 degrees. If a ray of light traveling in the liquid has an angle of incidence, at the interface of 37.5 degrees, what angle does the refracted ray in the air make with a normal, if the ray of it traveling at an angle of 37.5, what angle does the refracted light in the liquid make? Okay. So, I'm gonna start by drawing a picture because this does not feel intuitive. All right, critical angle for internal reflection and liquid interface is that, okay. So that's saying that this will be liquid, this will be air. We know the, we can assume the index or fraction of air is one. And so this will be N1, this will be N2, this will be question mark for N1. We know that the light coming in is at some mystery angle. Uh, we know it's at 40.5 degrees. So I'm gonna say theta one equals 40.5. We're told it's total internal reflection. So we know that theta two equals 90 degrees, because that's the critical angle. The critical angle is where total internal reflection just starts to happen. So we have 40.5. And so I think we have all the information to apply Snell's law here. N1 sine theta one equals N2 sine of theta two. We don't know what N1 is, so N1 equals, and we can solve this here, N2 sine of theta two all over sine of theta one. Um, we know the sine of theta two, theta two is 90 degrees, so this right here is just going to be one, and N2 is one, so this becomes one over sine of 41 degrees. Nope, 45, 40.5, 40.5 degrees. So putting that into a calculator, 
on, I'm just gonna do sine of 40.5, and then one over second answer, we get 1.54. So 1.54 is the index of refraction of our um, liquid. All right, so now it looks like it has a completely separate problem that they're asking, which is fine. So we have liquid N1 equals 1.54, and two, which is air, which is gonna be one. If a ray of light traveling in the liquid has an angle of incidence of 37.5, so we're gonna do it like this. Oop, this theta one equals 37.5. What angle does the refracted ray in the air make with the normal Okay, what angle does the refracted ray in the air make with normal? Okay, so then, so this, nope, make that dotted line because it is a, so we should have, a, since it's going from slow to fast, this should be bigger, and so asking what is theta two. So we'll go back to Snell's law, old reliable, n one sine theta one equals n two sine of theta two, solving for theta two, we get theta two equals arc sine of n one sine theta one over n two, which is gonna be arc sine of 1.54 sine of 37.5 divided by n two, which is one. So I could probably just have left that off. So I'll go to a calculator. We're gonna do, uh, I'll start with just 1.54 times sine of 37.5, and we're in degrees. Uh, I should probably check, yep, degrees. And then I'm gonna find the arc sine of that answer. And that gives us 69.6, theta two, equals 69.6 .6 degrees. 39.6, yep, theta two is 69.6 .6 degrees. If a ray of light traveling in air has an angle of incidence of that, what angle does it make? Oh, okay, so this is going the opposite direction. So I'm gonna draw the same picture, except now this is gonna be 37.5, N1 is going to be one, and N2 is going to be 1.54. In, in air, yep. And I could have done, I could have drawn the, I could just use the same diagram I had earlier and just drawn the light going the other direction. Um, either way works. Oh, so I'm gonna say this is theta two equals question mark. So I'm actually gonna use the same formula I had over here. I'm just gonna change the numbers a bit. So I'm gonna say theta two equals arc sine of N one sine theta one over N two. Except this time, we have, let's see, arc sine, that stays the same. N1 is now one. We have sine of theta one, still 37.5. And now we're dividing by N2, which is 1.54. So basically we just, same formula, we just flip the index of refractions. So now I can put this into my calculator. So I'm gonna do sine of 37.5, uh, delete, 0.5, divided by 1.54, second arc sine, second answer, and that gives us an answer of 23.3, 23.3 degrees. So theta two, in this case, has a terrible theta two. Hope theta two is 23.3 degrees. 
So these are basically just part A and part B are basically to two totally separate questions. Don't really rely on the previous part A. Yep. All right. So to backtrack what we did on this part, for this one, we uh, they gave us the critical angle and an angle of incidence. They gave us a critical angle, which which is the angle of incidence in this case. And we use that critical angle to find the index or a fraction, an unknown index or a fraction. We then use that unknown index or a fraction, which is now known, to solve basically two relatively straightforward Snell's Law questions. So that's the idea of total internal reflection. Hope it helped. See you next time.